The EPID project started in 2013 until 2015 with many months focusing on just the collaboration itself. The first step of the project was to validate the key challenges individual healthcare professionals were experiencing in their clinics serving their patient population. Literature review and interviews were conducted with an exploratory method. Challenges identified by the clinics were addressed in three live workshops with the interdisciplinary teams. Many of those barriers were beyond knowledge. A focus on the critical communication, decision making and teamwork were highlighted. The evaluation method selected was a time series mixed method approach over a six month period using level five from Moore's model. Some of the key outcomes and really what made this in initiative innovative was that the healthcare professionals who engaged in all three modules, which were sequenced based on adult education principles, were able to improve not only their knowledge and skills, but really translate some of those challenges or skills and knowledge acquired within their teams and thereafter directly with their patients. Also, one of the groups initiated an actual foot clinic. Patients were engaged in the evaluation to assess if impact had translated beyond the healthcare professionals and teams. And as well, administrators were able to identify some of the contextual challenges that were addressed. What made this innovative and credible started with setting up and documenting the collaborative public-private process with all stakeholders involved. This project was also ethics approved by an international IRB, which increased the credibility for all healthcare professionals, patients, and collaborators, and mitigated risk of perceived conflict of interest and bias, a very important issue in our environment today. We are actually pleased to share with you today on behalf of all of the collaborators that this project has actually already been presented at the 27th National Congress of the Spanish Society of Diabetes, the 76th American Diabetes Association ADA, the World CPD Congress in 2016, and recently submitted to the 22nd Wonka Europe Conference, as well as submitted to peer review journals for publication. So on that note, thank you, merci, Gracias, and may we all continue to pursue on elevating the standards of education to ensure greater impact and value for our healthcare teams in various countries so we may better deliver quality of care for our patients. So Detect launched, we had a mobile website that launched in February of 2016 that was immediately followed by a large number of national summit meetings throughout the country starting in March of 2016. We created a multi-module format where we created a, a web app to develop kind of a community that everybody could utilize in the Detect Owls website. It was then turned into a series of live summit meetings that took place throughout the country and then we had a series of grand rounds that were institutionally based. Uh, we created uh, a number of online activities um, 17 different online activities uh, that were based on local issues. Uh, so we really got to the local um, practice of education in this design. So the Tech Initiative was designed as a large-scale initiative in the Alzheimer's space where we were truly trying to reach a multidisciplinary care team. So we had physicians from your PCPs, your family practice, as well as neurologists, nurses, nurse practitioners, pharmacists we accredited for all of these organizations. Really the program is open to uh, everyone uh, because there's so many people that need to touch and deal with uh, the Alzheimer's patient. So what was exciting from an outcomes perspective is we were able to get uh, all the way through level five data in terms of behavior and really looking at making changes and making effort and putting in together really hope for uh, the patient community and the Alzheimer's community of new therapies that were being developed or currently in development, uh, but also talking about how to manage patients they currently have. 
uh, where there's not any new tools, there are lots of resources. So what we talked to folks about and what we educated on was driving those resources and developing new resources to detect earlier and earlier uh, and, and make an earlier diagnosis. Um, and we were able to measure that uh, from a data perspective. Uh, so while we did have some um, patient level data throughout, it was really built on a level five program uh, where we measured competence and we me measured then behavior change in practice. We've been very excited to be able to put this program out there as a case study and we're currently authoring a white paper on it uh, and the impact that it's had not only for the practitioners but also within the CME community because we've been able to demonstrate the value of develop, developing a community of care, which is really what we did within the DETECT initiative. We developed a community of care for physicians, nurses, uh, people from all different fields that touch the Alzheimer's patient, as well as the Alzheimer's patient and their caregivers themselves. Alzheimer's is a very difficult space because there haven't been so many advances, and obviously it's something that's devastating to families, uh, caregivers, uh, to be in this situation. So by providing them a resource and a place to go, uh, we felt that we had a real true impact, not only on the learners, but also on the caregivers, the families, and the patients. The Obesity Summit for Residents and Fellows was an immersive two and a half day live course held in March 2016, designed specifically for postgraduates across multiple disciplines. Qualified by a strict set of parameters, 63 residents or fellows were nominated to participate and serve as the obesity ambassador for their institution. This program was originally designed to assess competence-based outcomes. However, we were also able to measure performance, patient and institutional-based outcomes. To measure and analyze outcomes, we quantified participants' responses to the interactive assessments throughout the summit noting a 110% relative increase in knowledge and competence and over a 500% relative increase in confidence. By means of follow-up surveys, we were also able to observe substantial improvements in provider performance, patient health, and institutional changes in their approach to obesity care. This education is innovative and deserving of recognition because of its approach to tackle the inadequate level of obesity instruction that is provided throughout medical training. Our participant selection process enabled us to identify the early adapters to follow through with practice changes. Content was reinforced through a range of educational tactics, including TED-like didactic presentations, individual and group assessments, live patient interaction, and gaming activities iPad programming allowed real-time interaction with the content and experts. The intimate setting facilitated the establishment of new professional relationships. We've already seen the impact on the healthcare industry in that these obesity ambassadors are establishing comprehensive obesity care plans within their institutions with the potential to create a ripple effect throughout the nation. In terms of learner performance, we know that the majority have implemented changes into practice and have observed improvements in patient health including not only weight loss, but a broad range of physical, mental, and psychosocial benefits as well. Given the huge success of the Obesity Summit for residents and fellows, similar activities with enduring components are planned in the future to extend the reach of this education and strengthen the network of physicians who are competent and motivated in providing comprehensive obesity care, as well as other therapeutic areas.